Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Unity of Wilmington Hybrid Service. My name is Myron McNeil, and I'm certainly glad that you are here as we celebrate these three important truths. You are a beloved expression of God, and you're here for a holy purpose, and you're always in the right place at the right time right now. I'm sending out a message to myself so that when I hear it on the radio, I will know that I am fine. I will know that I am Katie Dees, and all of you, and all of you, thank you for joining us on live stream. Thank you for your presence, your presence here, and thank you for your presence in this world. Many times we go through our lives, and we have a belief system that we're whole. We can say it to ourselves, but we may still be struggling with our own wholeness. I don't know if you guys do that at all, but it comes up for me almost every day. Our wholeness, finding a way to live in it. And what is it anyway? Some people define wholeness as holiness. This is our holiness. Some people define wholeness as when things are going great in life and everything's smooth and working well, but we forget to embrace those challenges and those difficult times that sometimes show up in our lives. Or is it just me? <laughs> 
sometimes we forget that the difficulty is just part of life. Sometimes we make ourselves wrong by thinking that somehow we have created that difficulty. And other times we will just get mad that it occurs. And sometimes we do whatever we do with it. And yet we are whole, cre created in the image and the likeness of God. We are whole. There's an old New Thought writer. I say old because he wrote in the early 20th century. His name is Thomas Troward. I might be saying his name. Troward. Thomas Troward. So he says, wherever spirit is at all, the wholeness of spirit must be. Take that in a moment. Wherever spirit is at all, the wholeness of spirit must be. There's no, oh, a little bit's here and a little bit's there. But the wholeness must be. And because you and I are created in the image and likeness of God, we must be the wholeness of spirit. The real question, and you've heard me ask this in many ways before, is are we expressing our wholeness of spirit? And some days it is much easier to do than others. But are we being the wholeness of spirit? In unity, we talk about this as there is only one presence and one power active in the universe and in our lives. God, the good, omnipotence. That's the wholeness of spirit. And yet when we bring words to a concept like wholeness, it's very difficult to not make duality in it. Because how do we define wholeness? How do we even describe wholeness? It's kind of like the infinite. The infinite is so infinite, it's hard for me to imagine from my finite self. And wholeness can be the same way. How do I imagine myself as whole when I remember, oh, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have said that. You know, I have those thoughts that then, if I allow them to, will spin in my mind. Or do you know what he said to me? Or what she said to me? How could they say that to me? Don't they know who I am? We get self-righteous at times. Instead of allowing our wholeness to say, wow, you know, that's someone else's opinion of me. I don't have to take it on. It doesn't have to be mine. And it's perfectly fine if it's theirs because that's them. Eric Butterworth, the unity minister, says that we don't see the world as it is, we see the world as we are. And what he's talking about is that we see the world through our own level of consciousness. So if I'm having a day where I feel like I'm not good enough, then when I move through my day, I'm going to see a lot of evidence for not being good enough. Oh, somebody's going to cut me off in traffic. Well, if I were a better driver... Somebody's going to be rude to me because they're having a bad day, but I don't really know that, but I assume it's me. Oh, gosh, you know, I must not have done that right. Maybe I didn't stand in my power enough, but there's some not enoughness that we're expressing because that's where we are in consciousness. Now, hopefully that's just a day and not a week or a month or a year or a lifetime, but what we can do is recognize, oh, that's where I am in consciousness. How can I love myself for being exactly in this place in consciousness? Not try to get rid of it, not try to change it, not try to make myself wrong, but bring the generosity of my heart to that experience that I'm having. And then as I make that shift, as I bring the generosity of my heart to that experience, as I'm able to love myself for feeling not good enough, then I'm going to make a shift. I'm already in the act of presencing myself. So I'm going to make a shift. And as I make that shift in consciousness, as I move through my life, as I move through my day, I'm going to have a different experience. That person cuts me off. That's what drivers do sometimes. I'm going to think, oh, wow, I'm glad I noticed that. Instead of, oh, I must be a bad driver, my consciousness has shifted, so I'm going to have <clears throat> a different experience. Oh, I'm so grateful I noticed that. I'm grateful I was present for this moment. 
and then I can do whatever I do next. So if somebody says something offhand to me, maybe they are having a bad day themselves. Maybe that's just who they are. Maybe I have done something that I don't know that actually offended them because that happens sometimes. And I can go, oh, I wonder what that's about when I'm feeling good about myself, when I'm feeling my wholeness, when I'm feeling a different frequency, I'm going to have a different response. So as we stand in our wholeness, as we're willing to really take a look at what's going on for us, then it's helpful to know that we see the world as we are. You know, sometimes, sometimes we forget about the mystery of life. Sometimes we forget that life is actually this grand adventure that we're on. And we forget, and we think, oh, this obstacle shouldn't be in my way, but the obstacle is in my way. Instead of going, wow, I wonder, I wonder what to do about this. I wonder how I can resolve this issue that's showing up for me. How can I love it in a way that's going to delight me and resolve, change the issue? And then there are times when as we do that, the answer comes instantly, and sometimes the answer comes through another person, and sometimes the answer takes a long time. But if we keep living in that fascination, in the wonder, if we keep living in the idea that life is this grand adventure, that we are here for a holy purpose, and part of our purpose is to learn how to stand fully in the wholeness. We say it, you know, here, we are beloved expressions of God. We are God expressing. We are God expressing. So as we express in our adventures, as we see the adventure itself as an expression of the divine, we can navigate it with more greater ease and greater joy. We can recognize that there is no spot where God is not. And if you don't like the word God, put some other word in there. Don't let the word hold you up. Because we use a multitude of words, and we like different words. Even for the word wholeness, I know God has a charge, an, an energetic charge for some people. Oh, I don't like that word. But what's really cool is that wholeness has one too. Some people see wholeness as allness. It's just simply the allness. Some people call wholeness unity. So we don't want to tell somebody they're wrong with the, the terminology that they're using. We just can go, oh, in the beauty of the greatness of the unique expression and the infiniteness of that unique expression, we can have a variety of words. We can, it's like we can have a variety of vegetables. I mean, I think about this a lot. I don't much care for Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> but when I go to a buffet, I don't say, oh, I can't come here anymore. There are Brussels sprouts here. I just go, oh, there are Brussels sprouts. I think I'll pass them by. So I can get my knickers in a knot about Brussels sprouts. And if we think anything is really Brussels sprouts, you know, we can substitute anything. I can get my knickers in a knot about just about anything if that's the level of consciousness that I'm at. But I'm calling us to be at a greater level of consciousness. I can embrace the, the Brussels sprouts without tasting the Brussels sprouts. I can be very happy that the Brussels sprouts are there because I know that there are people who absolutely adore them and are get very excited when they see them on the buffet. So what I'm really saying to us is this is an adventure. We can even try the Brussels sprouts to see if maybe today I will like them. And maybe I will, and maybe I won't. But life is this adventure. We can try a multitude of things. And we can do this in our religious practice also, in our spiritual practice. Religious means unity. We forget that when we see wars that are happening over religious ideology. But religion actually means unity, to come together in unity, to come together in our wholeness with each other. So what I can do is I can know what I like, and I can celebrate what someone else is like. 
I might not have to like that same thing, but I can celebrate it because it is part of the wholeness of life. Sometimes we forget our oneness with God and each other. We forget that we're one because we may feel so separated, and especially in a time where we're being asked to physically distance. I know they call it social distance, but we're being asked to physically distance from each other to be safe for ourselves and others. We can still remember that what the mystics knew millennia ago, what the mystics knew millennia ago is that we are all connected and interconnected. And quantum physics is starting to show that, has been showing it for quite some time, but now it's getting down into language that even I can understand. <laughs> so, so we're beginning to see that. And as we believe that, know that, and experience that, then in our wholeness, we're going to open our hearts with greater love to each other and our differences. And that's my invitation today, particularly to really learn how to live in our wholeness, embrace each other's wholeness, recognize that we are part of a greater wholeness. Here we call it the transcendent God, that which is greater than all of us, and yet that which is within each of us. And so that as, our, as we interact, as we move through our day, that we can recognize when the person cuts us off, oh, I wonder when I have done that in the past. Maybe I did it knowingly, maybe I did it unknowingly, but I might have inconvenienced somebody. So if I bring my generosity of heart to that experience, then I can be generous in loving what just happened in the car. I can express my fear. Oh, I felt scared when that happened. Instead of allow my fear to be the reaction that I give to someone. Remembering, recognizing, knowing that wherever we show up, you and I, wherever any individual shows up, they are showing up at their level of consciousness and they are expressing the degree to which they know and understand and experience the wholeness of spirit. And we're always in flux with that and really just being generous with each other as we are on our paths. Now, Marcel Proust says, the real voyage of discoveries consists not in seeking new landscapes, but having new eyes. How can I do this? How can I bring new eyes to everything that I see? One way I can bring new eyes is every time I walk into a room, I can ask myself, what energy am I bringing to this room? Am I bringing my not good enough persona? Polly might come up sometimes and, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. I don't, I don't even know. What am I going to do when I walk in that room? Will somebody even talk to me? Because, you know, I'm not really good enough. And we may not articulate this very often to each other, but how different would it be if we did that? If we just said, you know, I'm coming in today, I'm not feeling good enough. And somebody said, yay, you know exactly where you are. I celebrate that you're having an authentic expression. And if you decide you want something different, let me know. But I'm going to wait till you tell me you would like something different. And then I'll offer my experience of you to you. What, how, how different would that be? You know, we can wear badges that say, um, and we're kind of doing it in a way about what we want, but we could wear badges that say, I'm feeling on top of the world. Don't complain to me today. <laughs> you know, we could share these parts of ourselves and we could actually have a great time doing this. But instead, so often we come and maybe we're not feeling so good. Maybe we're not feeling so good about ourselves. And we often will try to put forth a different kind of persona because, you know, I don't want somebody to know that I'm really mad. So I try to be happy. I try to smile. I, and it's going to come out sideways. You're going to walk away and say, oh, something's going on with Reverend Nikki. Wonder what it is. And most of us, myself included, will say, oh, I wonder if it was me. 
Did I do something? Did I say something? Maybe she doesn't like me. You know, we, we do this. We, we ruminate in our minds. So we have the opportunity when we recognize the wholeness of spirit, when we recognize the consciousness that we have brought to the moment, I can go, oh, oh, there's an old thought. There's an old thought that I have been deciding that I'm not going to allow into my consciousness. And I see that it's here, and I'm going to love that thought, and I'm going to change that thought. Wow, I wonder how I can support. I wonder how I can say I love you in a way that the person will hear me. I wonder how I can communicate that I'm really excited to see this person. I wonder how I can communicate that I would like to be a person of support. Or I would just like to acknowledge, oh, I see something is going on with you. I see your wholeness. I trust that you can do whatever you need to do to handle that. And if you want some assistance, please feel free to let me know. But until you do, I'm going to simply let you be. There have been times I have been in places where I feel very sad. And I might share that with somebody. And what is most loving and most honoring is when somebody says, thank you, I'll honor you where you're at instead of try to conjole you or try to get you into a different place. Thank you. I will honor you exactly where you're at in this moment because I know in our wholeness that none of us will be in that moment forever and that each of us has the capacity to reach out to each other. And I believe that's what spiritual community is best at, to really reach out to each other, to share to delight in our successes and to support each other in the places that we feel are not going so well, that are our challenges, and to truly support each other in the places where we feel we have failed. Because sometimes we believe that we have failed. And yet when we step back and look at the fact that we are divine, we're fully human and we're fully divine, can we ever truly fail? Do we just have an experience that was vastly different than what we expected to have? Was it truly a failure? Did it lead us to a new place, a new idea? Did it lead us to going back to the proverbial drawing board and rethinking and recreating and stepping forward in a new way? Because the wholeness of spirit is in our creativity the wholeness of spirit is in our guidance. The wholeness of spirit is in all the parts of ourselves. The wholeness of our spirit, the wholeness of spirit is in that part of us that feels we're not good enough. It has to be. The mystics have been saying it for years. So what can we do? How can we look differently at something? And are we trying to recreate something that was in our past. or That's one that comes up quite often. There was a student who'd saved up a lot of money who's so excited. He was going to see his guru in India, and he got to India, and he got to meet his guru, and he was sitting meditating with his guru, and he had the best time. And when that level of meditation was over and the people were on their own, then he went and he sat in the guru's garden, and he was meditating in the guru's garden. And all of a sudden, he had this flash of light come forth through him, all around him. And he felt the energy and the connection of the allness of the universe. And he was so excited. And he went to his guru and he said, I have had an experience of God. And the guru said, yes, you have. How beautiful for you. And the student kept going to the garden and going to the garden and meditating, started meditating longer, started meditating at different times of the day. Finally, he went to his teacher and he said, oh, I've gone back to the garden every single day. I've meditated for 30 minutes. I've meditated for two hours. I've meditated for six hours. And I'm not having an experience of God. What's wrong? And the guru smiled took a breath and said, you found God in the garden. Go look for God somewhere else. Don't go back to where we've always been. 
But let's look in all of the infinite possibilities. Look in all of the infinite possibilities for that experience. Because it is the experience of our wholeness, of our godness, of our goodness. Wholeness is also equal to love. It is the experience of our love that we are truly seeking. And we can find it to some degree in our head knowledge. We can bring it to our heart knowingness, but we must have an experience of it to move ourselves forward in life. So imagine if that moment of bliss, that moment of enlightenment that you had, that moment of feeling connected to all that is, came forth in you, from within you, in that moment that the person cut you off, in that moment that somebody said something to you that you felt the contraction around. What if you brought that same level of enlightenment, the experience of being whole, the experience of being all that we are, the experience of knowing and experience our capacity to live fully. What if we brought that into that moment? Many of us have learned not to live our fullest self. We've learned to do it because we're afraid of ridicule. We're afraid of someone judging us. Somebody saying, oh, I knew you weren't going to make that. I knew you couldn't do that. Oh, I just knew that was going to fail. We allow ourselves to not experiment in this grand adventure because we're afraid of that. And what we've done is we've allowed someone else's opinion to be bigger than ours. Someone else who maybe is not feeling in their wholeness. Because what if we tried that and it didn't work, but the not workedness of it led us to another discovery, which we have seen much of that when we look at science. That's how we have a lot of items that we use on a daily basis. And so what if it didn't work? Did you have a good time doing it? Like, I love the piano. I love it. I love listening to piano music, David Lons and Yuruma. I love listening when Katie's in here playing. I just, I love piano music. There's something about it. And when I was a kid, I took piano lessons. And I did not like the discipline that I needed to really be able to play well. So later on, when I was an adult, I took piano lessons, and I had a great time at the piano, and I may be at elementary too, if any of you know piano, <laughs> still in kind of the bigger notebooks, but I have a good time doing it, and I really like to do it when nobody else is around the house, so, you know, or when it's empty in here, sometimes I come and play around, but I love it. So what if I will never be David Lons or Yuruma? So what? I have fun. And I have to, when I start sitting around playing on the piano, I have to set my alarm. I have to set it in case I have something to do so I don't just blow past it because time just totally disappears. When we are in our wholeness, time disappears for us. So when we are feeling separate from another, recognize that time has contracted for us. And when we can get into doing something that we have great joy with, when we can do something that makes our heart sing, then time expands again. And we're the ones that are creating the contraction and the expansion. So I set my timer so that I'm on time to places I want to go. The only thing that really gets me is when the cat comes and sits on the piano and says, "Uh, you know, I have these big ears and they have had enough. And then I know, okay, time for me to stop playing around like this. But I have had fun and the cat amuses me when he does that. So we can find joy in even the smallest things when we are willing to see the wholeness of life, when we are willing to look for the good in life, when we are willing to see What possibilities, what opportunities, what thing to wonder about, what can fascinate us in any situation. 
Is that something you're willing to do? Is that something you're open to? Would you like to get up every day being fascinated by life? Would you like to get up every day and feel like, wow, I can't wait to see what happens next? We have that capacity to do it in our wholeness. And would you like to be able to get up and say, oh, I'm feeling tired. Maybe I want to go back to bed for a little while and rest without making ourselves wrong. Would you like to be able to have tried something like a new dish and it didn't quite come out the way you thought and say, oh, well, pizza night. I'm glad I have the money to do that. So that whatever experience is coming forth for us, that we're going to meet it in fascination and wonder. We're going to meet it looking for the wholeness of the situation. And we're going to meet it looking for the joy that we can find in that situation. It's something that's possible for each of us. It's something that is a part of each of us already. We don't have to go looking for it, just like we don't have to go out looking for God anywhere. Although we can have experiences of the divine anywhere we are because we are divine. And in our experience, we may touch somebody's life that we have no idea that we even touched it because we were simply being us, simply living in the wholeness of life. So Eric Butterworth says, to practice the presence is to live constantly as if you really believe that the allness of God, that's his name for God, to really believe that the allness of God, the divine potential for wholeness were present within you. That's what I'm inviting us to. To not just believe in God, but to live from a consciousness of God. To not just to believe that we're divine, but to live from the consciousness of our divinity. See, I can't not smile when I say that because I feel the truth of it. I feel the truth of it for me and I feel the truth of it for you. And I celebrate that it's true for all of us and all of you and all of anybody who is on this planet. To practice daily, to practice weekly, to practice monthly, yearly, millennially, the presence of God. To be, allow our come from, to be from the consciousness of our divinity or whatever name you use. Eric Butterworth says, we are eachness in the allness, which I like because it's kind of catchy. I'm an eachness in the allness. So things that are catchy, that are kind of rhymy, they may irritate us, but they do stick in our minds. So, and then I just want to cover this part. So we're, I'm reminding you, we can make a shift from believing ourselves to being separate to experiencing our connectedness with each other in our oneness. And to remember, the moment I feel separate from you, then I'm actually probably feeling separate from myself somewhere. And I can allow that, you can allow that to be a cue for you, like a little flag on the play that says, hey, pay attention, notice, notice something. When Jesus was teaching and moving about and he was doing healings, there was an experience, and I've talked about this a bit, so I'll just do it briefly. There was an experience where there was a woman who was in the group, and she had been bleeding for 12 years. And in the Jewish culture, women did not reach out and touch men. Oftentimes, they weren't even supposed to be where the men were. But in this moment, the woman was there, and she had tried a lot of things. In some of the texts of the scripture, people will, uh, the writers will say that she had spent her livelihood, she had spent all her money trying to figure out what was going on. And her faith that Jesus and her connectedness to Jesus could, whole, could heal her and bring forth that wholeness that was already within her was so strong that she was willing to risk even death, because that's the penalty. That would have been a penalty at that time. It's hard for me to imagine 
that if I touched a man that I could be put to death. But that's the way it was in that culture. And that, so sometimes it's hard for us to imagine that. But he, she reached out and she touched his garment. Some people, some translations say, touched his prayer cords. I don't know. But what I do know is he stopped and he said, who touched me? He felt it. He felt it. He felt that very light touch on his garment. And his disciples were like, oh, come on, come on. You, nothing happened. No one touched you. You know, there's a lot of people around you. We'll never know who touched you. And in the moment that Jesus stayed there and said, no, I know someone touched me. And he's scanning. Can you just imagine Jesus scanning the crowd? He's looking for that person who has change in vibration. We don't think about that often. But having touched him, she had to have changed in vibration. And he is looking. And she steps forward from a knowingness in her heart. And she said, it was me. I touched you. Can you imagine the fear in standing in her truth in that moment? Have you ever been afraid to stand in your truth? Afraid of what would happen from someone else? Can you imagine the fear that she had standing in her truth in that moment? It was me. And from a generosity of heart and from a full understanding and experience of oneness, oneness with each other, Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Your faith. Are we willing to stand in the faith? that we are whole already. To focus on our wholeness so much, to let nothing deter us from that focus, that anything that we feel like is unwhole within us or around us simply falls away. That's my hope for you. That's my hope for me. That's my hope for everyone. And I want to be a person who, as I move through my life, is living from that wholeness as much as I can any moment of every day, no matter what's coming at me. It can be challenging. Some days it's easy. It can be like, oh, my gosh. And some days I need a friend to remind me, hey, you're not alone. Hey, you, you got this. What a joy that we can be that for each other. And then we seek to find God in all things and all circumstances, which is exactly what I'm talking about. That is how we live a life of wholeness. Myrtle Fillmore says, I would have loved to meet her. I just would have loved to meet her because I can see her just kind of hands on her hips in a way, not punitive, but kind of jokingly, but very much meaning it, saying, so get busy using the truth you know. Get busy standing in your wholeness. Get busy going from believing in God to living from the consciousness of God, from believing that we have the capacity to be whole, to live from that consciousness of our own wholeness. And then when we do that, we know, she knows from her experience, I know from my experience, and hopefully you know from your experience that then we can bring forth our own joyous world of love, friendship, beauty, and plenty. There is within you, there is within me, there is within everybody on this planet the God-given intelligence to build such a world. Get at it. Get at it. Let's do that. Let's do this. Let's live a life of wholeness. Let's take these thoughts with Myrtle Fillmore into meditation. I'm going to read this for you one more time without all of my interruptions into it. But I'd like you to just take it in. Let yourself just hear these words wash over you. Let them embrace you and then infuse your consciousness, and then you choose, are you willing to accept these? Are you willing to live from your consciousness of God? So get busy using the truth you know. Bring forth, call forth and claim your own joyous world of love. 
of friendship, of beauty and plenty. There is within you the God-given intelligence to build such a world. Get to it. Get to it. What do you want in your life that you have been too afraid of somebody else's judgment or ridicule to stand in? That you've been afraid somebody will say, and why do you think you could do that? What is that? What is that deepest heart desire that you would like to bring forth that's for you, that would make your heart happy, that would make your heart sing, that you would lose all track of time? What is it you've been holding back on in your life? How have you not been living fully? Are you willing? Are you willing to stand in the consciousness of your divinity, knowing that you have every capacity within you to bring forth that desire? You have every capacity within you to bring forth that desire. Let yourself play around in your own mind with what's stopping you and embrace that. Love it. Don't try to get rid of it. See it as the wholeness of life. And then move beyond it. Feel the fear that you might feel and do it anyway. Feel the fear and ask yourselves, where did that fear actually come from? Whose voice is that in my head? Where did I get the idea I couldn't do this? Where did the idea come from that I could do this? And am I willing to do it? Am I willing to step forth and live my life as fully as possible to be on the grand adventure of life? Am I willing? The biggest limitation for any of us is the way in which we limit ourselves whether it's from some message we received as a child or as an adult or some idea we've got in our head that we can't do it. Let your generous heart just embrace and infuse those ideas, those questions. Let your adventuresome spirit come, become involved in those questions so that you're really treating them as a possibility as something to be known, as something to be embraced and to be loved, as something to understand, to bring our, our power, our capacity, our faculty of understanding to, to bring our wisdom to, to bring the wholeness of who we are to. And in your mind's eye right now, I invite you to say, I am whole. And then take a breath after you say it in your mind. And you can say it quietly out loud if you like. I am whole. And take a breath and notice what it feels like to say. I am whole. Makes my heart smile and my mouth, my smile smiles. I am whole. I can write this down. And any time I have doubt, I can read it. I can get a buddy who's willing to tell me when I forget. I can step beyond my fears. I can allow my opinion of myself from my inner guidance to be the most important opinion. I can make a daily practice of prayer and meditation, of journaling, of moving, of dancing however you bring forth your creativity. And I can live in ways that make my heart sing. And life is an adventure of seeing myself and each other as whole and standing in the consciousness of our divinity together as one, fully embracing our unique individualized expression and fully embracing all of the invisible threads of the universe that run between us and through us and around us, allowing us to be interconnected heart 
the heart. And as you go through this week, I'm going to invite you, as you begin to come back, to bring the thoughts with you, to bring the ideas with you, to bring with you the excitement of life, to know that we live and we move and we have our very expression as God in life. Allow it to come forth for you with joy and excitement. And I invite you across this week to begin to look for the good in all things. And when you catch yourself going, oh, I forgot to do that, go back and do it. Let yourself be willing to create your own perfect day. Let yourself willing, be willing to create a perfect day each and every day, one that delights you, one where you go, oh, I want to share my day with you and how wonderful it was. So coming back to this time, this place, this now moment, are you willing to make that commitment? And if you are not, love yourself for not being willing. And if you are, love yourself for being willing so that no matter what you choose, you are recognizing your own wholeness, that you are an eachness in the allness of the wholeness of life and have a great time creating your perfect life. day with nothing much to do as the sun came breaking down through the clouds i'd never seen the sky so blue i saw a cajun man with a red guitar singing on the side of the street i threw a handful of change in his beat up case and said play me a country beat and it sounded like I hopped into the back of a jacked up Jeep, felt the wind upon my face. We got to the spot and the sun was hot, everybody was feeling fine. So we jumped on in for a midday swim and we lost all track of time. It was the perfect day. It was a perfect day. Whoa. 